Mostly I'm a theatre historian, so I write about the theatre in the 17th and 18th centuries, mostly British theatre. Uh, I also write about the early English novel, the way the novel came into being as a literary form in England. Uh, I'm doing it largely because it fascinates me. Uh, I love working in archives with old documents. I love being able to bring the past alive to people, um, either through teaching, uh, through writing for general audiences, for theatres, opera houses, and so on. So what motivates me is being able to communicate the excitement of discovery, the excitement of new ideas, new information that people haven't found out before. You can never quite predict. You always want to come up with new paradigms, new ways of understanding things, new historical narr narratives. But you can never underestimate the power of the chance discovery. So one of the most exciting moments in my research career was about four years ago when I discovered a hitherto undiscovered letter um, about a very famous painting of Shakespeare, which was hugely significant for the narrative of the way that painting had kind of entered um, public consciousness. So you can never quite predict what you're going to find and, and that's the best reason for doing it. A range of people, first of all the students you teach because it's about shared discovery, teaching, about setting a great example for them so that they know what it means to push back the boundaries of their own personal knowledge of the subject. I also write quite a lot of um, kind of popular scholarly material through popular editions of work but also writing for theatre and opera programmes and this kind of thing. So to engage more people in debate about what literature is, uh, what theatre is, what the two things do in the public sphere. <laughs> English research is hugely diverse. Um, here in the School of English at Birmingham City University, for example, we have our Research and Development Unit in English Studies uh, that runs fantastic projects in computer automated linguistics. That turns out to have benefit for how you design dictionaries, how you define word meanings for dictionaries. It has benefits for translators, so for people whose native language is not English, it enables them to get a better understanding of the way English works. Uh, they ran a project um, only this year with an advertising agency who wanted to find out key words that were attached to products. So there's a whole range of benefits, both in terms of advancing knowledge, but also engaging with businesses, and getting them to understand how new technology can kind of help the world along. Music